Hey, it's Lenny McGill with the Glock Store Performance and Custom Shop right here in San Diego, California. Today we're going to talk about the $40 holster manufactured by Undertech Undercover. Uh, this is quite an amazing holster because it's $40 for one. I mean, imagine that. But at the same time, it really has a lot of functionality. I'm going to demonstrate that to you here, showing you uh, very shortly. First, uh, let's go ahead and talk about them. They're available in black and or coyote or tan, if you can see. I'm going to go ahead and concentrate on the tan one here. So I'm going to get this off the frame here. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and, and work with this a little bit. This is a, a, a holster that's going to fit either a Glock 19 or a Glock 17. I've got my Glock 19 trainer here. Uh, as you uh, have, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that this is a trainer that shoots lasers. So I've got a laser module inside, hence that's why I have the uh, red uh, uh, little uh, insert that's sticking out of the top here. Uh, it, uh, it lets me know that it's a laser gun. You're also going to notice that the uh, uh, trigger is always in the uh, unfired position, in the ready position in a sense. Every time I pull the trigger, a laser beam spits out. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but every time I pull the trigger, there's a red dot that comes out. And it resets itself as well. So uh, this is our reset trigger combined with the uh, laser bullet that allows us to uh, practice. And in this concealed carry drill, in this concealed carry demonstration, which we're going to talk about this $40 holster, I want to practice before I go out on the range. It's really your responsibility as a concealed carry citizen to be skilled and practiced with the uh, safety uh, rules in mind, as well as the, uh, the uh, tactical ability to deploy the handgun in mind before you actually run out to the uh, street with a concealed carry gun. So, of course, when you practice, we practice with a dry or unloaded gun. And the way to practice, in my mind, of course, uh, is to um, uh, simulate as much reality as possible, and that is really being able to shoot uh, uh, simulated bullets with this laser bullet and multiple shots, not just one shot, but multiple to be able to pull the trigger multiple times because that's what's going to happen in the real world. So that's why I really like this training setup and I wanted to let you see it real quick as well. Uh, so uh, this um, $40 holster uh, is a great option, like I said, because it's $40, but also because it has some great functionality. Let me show you real quick. First of all, uh, the gun goes in and is held securely. That's important. It's always important that whatever concealed carry option you have, that the gun is not going to just fall out by itself. Uh, this is a retention, uh, uh, a friction retention that uh, keeps the gun in place just by the friction alone. When I pull it out, a little bit of tug, but it comes out relatively easily. Key factor is it goes in, it stays in, okay? It's not coming out by itself. All right, number two, you can see that the trigger guard and the trigger itself are covered by the uh, hard kydex material, so it can't accidentally get in there. Uh, number three, when I draw, you'll notice that my trigger finger is basically lined up like that. As I draw out, it remains like that. I don't go to the trigger until I'm ready to shoot. Very important. Uh, again, for practice at home, make sure the gun is unloaded. In fact, I recommend that you have no ammunition in the same room when you do dry fire practice like this. It's very important that you understand that it's very easy to load the gun, to rack the slide, and pull the trigger. That's what it's designed to do. So it's up to you to make sure that you're in a sterile environment so you can't accidentally load the gun. Most accidents happen when people say, I didn't know the gun was loaded. So that being said, let's go ahead and detail this holster. So I'm taking the gun off a little bit. I'm going to show you how I wear it. Typically, what I'm going to do is figure out, well, where do I want to place it for my body style? I think I like it here. I've practiced with this enough that I like it right about this spot. What's going to be noticeable is that I have a belt loop right there in that spot, too. So let me show you how I handle that. I'll go ahead and take my belt off. And this is a belt we sell. It's a double layered all leather belt. Super comfortable, but thick enough to support the weight of the gun. Very, very important. You'll notice that when I wear it, I wear it on the third hole. But when I put this holster on, I'm going to cinch it down to the fourth hole and I'll show you why. Okay, first things first. What I like about this holster as well is it's got rubberized, uh, you know, tough rubber molly clips that'll accept any size belt. So it could be a dress belt. It could be, uh, you know, one and a half inch belt like this. You know, the, the key factor is, is that it's soft and it's not going to damage the exterior of the belt. Anybody who makes a Kydex holster with Kydex loops and you put your belt in there, it's going to scratch your belt like crazy. But these soft ones don't. So here's the deal. So I go ahead and slip my belt in into the one loop only, okay? Go halfway in here, and then watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come back in, I'm gonna put this around my belt loop, or through my belt loop, should I say. Then come back out and feed this belt through my uh, other loop here, so that 
I'm capturing the holster with my belt loop as well as the two molly loops that are on the back of the holster. Okay, so that's very important because now the holster is not going to slide too far around if in fact that we're going to slide at all. And I'll come through the other belt loop. And like I said to you earlier now, typically I wear my belt on the third hole, which is okay, it's comfortable. But for this application, I'm going to cinch it down just a little bit more and really suck that holster into my body. And now you can see it's really not going to move at all. It's solid, it's secure, and it's not going anywhere. Now the other thing to notice about this holster, which is really important, is that most of the gun sits above my belt line. If you notice that right there. So there's the belt line right here, right here. So I really only am exposing under the belt an inch and a half. Inch and a half. If I look at the whole belt itself, it'd probably be about, say, two or three inches that is actually being exposed. But you'll notice that it's easily concealed with a standard sweat, sweater or sweatshirt or whatever, just like that. So now I'm concealed and you can't really tell. I could open this up. I can go like this. You know, I can do everything. On this side, I've got my cell phone. Typically, I wear my cell phone on this side, but you'll notice I've got a little Kydex pouch as well for my cell phone. So I'm going to wear it on this side because I don't want to interfere with the uh, actual uh, gun itself. And, you know, if you really look, you probably could tell that there's a gun there if I kind of stretch it out and do that. But if I'm, I'm aware of that and I keep this sweater loose and I walk about in my normal day, even with or without this vest, you probably still can't tell. And that's the beauty of this thing. So now let's go ahead and talk about uh, some draw techniques. And I won't wear the vest right this moment for this $40 holster. And just like any other style of holster, no matter which one you're wearing, you always have to come up with a technique and you have to practice before you go out on the range. Uh, you know, one of the things I have to really say here too is that concealed carry is not about fast draw. I'm really never gonna be able to outdraw a bad guy who's got a gun on me if my gun is concealed. But if he's distracted or if I see something happening, the idea is that I have a gun on me. And I wanna be able to get to, get to it in a quick, and efficient and safe manner. So there's really three things happening there. Efficiency is speed. Safety is very important. I don't want to shoot myself as I'm drawing. A lot of times that does happen to people. Not a lot of times, but when people have accidents, it's typically on the draw because they don't practice really strict trigger finger discipline. So here's the technique that I like to invo involve myself in is basically I'm coming down, I got to clear the close. So I'm coming up and then straight down on the gun and then draw and go. All right, pretty simple. For the reholster, fingers out of the trigger. Thumb is over top of the slide so I don't accidentally knock it out of battery as I put it in the holster. Come back up, jam it in, conceal, ready to go. Just like that. You can get pretty fast at it with a little bit of practice. But the key is you have to practice. You know, so some people may have trouble with their arm coming back like so. But it just takes practice. And if it hurts when you come back here, put the holster somewhere else. Put it out front. Move it around front a little bit more. Uh, I know a lot of people like to wear them in the kidney position. That's pretty far back. I could probably do that as well. It may conceal a little bit better. I won't have maybe a lump here. But to me, you know, I mean, this is pretty good concealment. If you notice, my hands or my arms actually cover, cover the gun as well. So again, clear, grip. Make sure you don't grab or snag any clothing and then present the gun to the target. Now, if you notice, there's a real technique there too that I want to be aware of. I want to come up and I want to present the gun and get it turned up as, mo as fast as possible because I may have to shoot from here and then go. All right. Now, the other thing that I'll, you'll notice too is that I got to be very careful not to grab a sweater like that. So I always want to make sure that when I come up, I come up and I clear totally, get back down on the gun, and then to present. And you can actually slow this down a little bit too, because sometimes you want to be slow. You say, oh yeah, let me get my wallet for you. And there you come. So the idea is that you don't necessarily always have to make a violent move to it. Just be nice and slow. As soon as you come to the gun, then you come up. Once you get a, and acquire a good solid grip on the gun, that's when you can accelerate. And so that's what this uh, $40 holster is all about. 
It conceals well. It hugs to your body. That's one of the things I like about these rubberized, uh, plasticized uh, molly clips because they kind of can suck to your body. It doesn't hurt at all. It's very comfortable. It will mold itself into your body a little bit. The holster has a little bit of a, of a, of a curve to it, so it kind of sucks in there. That's why I go down to that third, uh, fourth belt um, loophole. And then um, basically, that's it. And now in our next video, we'll talk more about the magazine pouch as a spare.